I'm going to go through a few examples using the distance formula. Okay, so take a minute, get out a piece of paper, get a pencil out because you should be writing these problems down as I'm talking. Okay, these are great examples to have on like a note card or just in your notes so you can look back on it for homework or before a quiz or before a test. Okay, and also this distance formula will be given to you on the OPA and on the MCA, on all those standardized tests, you'll have a formula sheet available to you, and this is one of the formulas on that sheet. Okay, so we use the distance formula when we are given like two coordinate points, and they want us to find the distance between them. Okay, and I'm going to show you how the distance formula is kind of related to the Pythagorean theorem in a way. Yes, it looks a lot more complicated than just the Pythagorean theorem, that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, but essentially the distance formula is the same thing, so it doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, sometimes the distance formula might be easier for you to use, and other times the Pythagorean theorem might be easier for you to use. Okay, so have this formula like at the top of your sheet. Okay, it'll show up on all my slides as I go through it, but just make sure you have it written down somewhere. All right, so for example, let's say we were given point one two and point six six, and they wanted us to find the distance between those. So first thing, since I'm given a graph, I'm going to plot those points. So I'm going to plot one two and six six. Okay, and they want us to find this distance between the two points. Now some people automatically think like slope. Okay, slope is that rate of change, it's not the distance. Okay, so we have to use a different formula than slope. Now notice that we can create a lovely right triangle off of it. Okay, we have our horizontal distance and we have our vertical distance. Okay, we know that that creates a right triangle. So I'm going to use my Pythagorean theorem first. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as my horizontal distance, or the differences between my x values. The difference between 1 and 6, I get that 5. Okay, and then I have my vertical distance, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and notice that's my difference in my y values. The difference between 2 and 6 is 4. And it's important that you know that distance, we always talk positive numbers. So your answer should always be positive when we're talking distance. Because I wouldn't say, like, I'm going negative 3 miles home from school today. No, you're going 3 miles. It's always talking in positive. Okay, now, if I'm going to use my Pythagorean theorem for this, okay, my A and B, those were the legs of my triangle, so 5 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. And I get 25 plus 16 equals c squared. If I add those together, I get 41. So c ends up being the square root of 41. Okay, so that's one option. You can always go back to the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, but let's say we wanted to use our distance formula. What if we didn't have a graph available to us? Okay, so I'm going to erase this work. Okay, so pause the video now if you want to finish writing this down. Okay, so the distance formula. Notice we have like x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. Our first job always is to label our points. Okay, what I mean by labeling, okay, we're labeling one our first coordinate and one of them our second coordinate. Okay, it doesn't matter if you were to pick this one as your second and this one as your first. You're going to end up with the same answer. Just normally, we like to keep the first one as our first term, the second one as our second term, but it doesn't matter. Okay, and then, all I have to do is plug those numbers in to my distance formula. Exactly like it's shown. So I'm just plugging and chugging. Okay, my first one was an x2. Well, my x2 I said was 6. Okay, and then the next it says minus your x1. My x1 was a positive 1. And then we have my y2 was 6, and my y1 was 2. Okay, so now 
if we follow the orders of operations, we would do our parentheses first, right? We would have 6 minus 1, which is 5, and then 6 minus 2, which was 4. And re if you remember, when we had our coordinate points drawn in, remember our horizontal distance was 5 and our vertical distance was 4? And see how we ended up with a 5 and a 4 again using the distance formula. Crazy! All right, then after parentheses, orders of operations, we would do exponents. 25 plus 16. And oh my gosh, we ended up with the square root of 41 again. Okay, so again, the distance formula is essentially the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, but it gets it looks complicated because now we have coordinate points involved. We don't just have a side length of a triangle. Okay, so that's why it looks a little more confusing. All right, again, let's go through a problem. Let's say we have negative 2, 4, and 3, negative 2. Make sure you're writing these down as I go. So we have negative 2 and a positive 4 and positive 3, negative 2. And we want to find this distance. Okay, it doesn't matter which way I make my triangle. Okay, if I make it above the line or below the line, okay, I'm still going to end up with those same x and y distances. Okay, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I set up my Pythagorean theorem, 5 squared plus 6 squared equals c squared. So again, 25 plus 36 equals c squared. And I end up with the square root of 61. I kind of skipped a step there. Okay, so you should have ended up with the square root of 61. Okay, so let's do it using the distance formula. So same problem, but this time let's plug it in for the distance formula. Okay, I'm going to erase my work, so if you need to pause the video, do so now. Okay, first thing, if you remember, we label our points, okay? X always comes first, Y comes second. Notice that my ones are all together and my twos are all together, like my first coordinate and my second coordinate. And then we just copy down the formula. My X2, okay, my X2 is 3, minus my x1, which was negative 2. Notice that I kept the same sign they had above, and I brought that negative 2 with. Okay, it's important to keep all your signs the same. Plus, oh, my squared, plus y2, which was negative 2, minus my y1, which was 4 squared. Okay, parentheses should be first. Okay? You should always do the inside. If you need to check it in your calculator, do that. Okay, so we have the distance equals 3 minus a negative 2 ends up being a positive 5 plus negative 2 minus 4. We end up with a negative 6. Notice that I kept my parentheses there. It's important to keep those parentheses, especially when you end up with a negative, okay? Because when you plug it into your calculator, okay, remember that a negative times a negative always is a positive, and we're talking distance. Distance always has to be positive, okay? So a negative times a negative should always be positive, and that's the biggest mistake people make, okay, is that when we end up with 25 here, they want to say a negative 36 there, but it's not. Okay, a negative times a negative is a positive number. Okay, that is the biggest mistake people make. Okay, and you have to make sure your answer is positive. Okay, like I talked about, we're not going to say we're going negative three miles home. Okay, we're going to say we're going three miles home. Okay, and then 25 plus 36, we still end up with the square root of 61. Okay, so same problem, just a different way of doing it. Okay, either way is fine. I just need to see your work.
Okay, let's go through one where we're not given a graph. We'll just start with the distance formula. Okay, hopefully you know what to do first. Label your points. Okay, if you want to like write this down somewhere so you have it, because sometimes that's the hardest part for people. They don't remember that X comes first. They don't remember the ones versus the twos. Okay, so make sure you have that like a key somewhere so you know. Okay, so then we rewrite our distance formula. My x2 was 5 minus my x1, which I said was 3, plus my y2, which was negative 2, minus my y1, which was 4. Okay, and what should I do next? Think about it for a second. Hopefully you said parentheses, or you said it in your head. Okay, so we have 5 minus 3, which is a positive 2. Negative 2 minus 4, we end up with a negative 6 squared. All right, what should I do next? Think about it. Look at it. 2 times 2 to get 4, and negative 6 times negative 6 to get 36. All right, and then we end up with the square root of 40 for this one. Okay, I want to show you quickly about switching around our x1 and, or our x1, y1, and our x2, y2. I want to show you that we'll still get the square root of 40 regardless. Okay, so the next time I'm going to say this is x2 and this is y2 and this is x1, y1. So I'm going to erase my work and do that in just a minute. Okay, so again, set up our distance formula. Okay, my x2 this time was 3 minus my x1, which was 5 squared. My y2 was 4 this time minus my y1, which was a negative 2 squared. Okay, we still do our parentheses first. 3 minus 5 to get a negative 2 this time. And 4 minus a negative 2 to get a positive 6. Okay, so notice that Last time, the 6 was negative, and the 2 was positive. Okay, exponents, 4 plus 36. Look at that, square root of 40. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that it doesn't matter which one you pick for your first term versus your second term. You'll still get the right answer. Okay, it doesn't matter which one you pick for which. Okay, hopefully you wrote these problems down as I went through the video. Okay, if you have additional questions, please make sure you ask or coming to after school math help.